Welcome to Kuvulu, the sorcery of copper. In this episode, we will see why my custom built electricity meter, the spark counter, doesn't actually work. Um, this is mainly because I have a three phase system installation, and this only works for a one phase system intel installation. I wasn't aware of this system, and this also shows you something important. I am not an electrician. Um, I didn't study it. I also didn't study electronic, but I'm still playing with it. And I did the same thing. I wasn't too, too much afraid of electricity. And I've learned what a three-phase system is. Quite interesting. And in this episode, I will show you what a three-phase system is and how to measure correctly, actually, the power consumption on the three-phase system. Uh, we'll use coils to measure the current. We'll use the oscilloscope to see how much current and how what voltages and phases are. And let's immediately start with it. But before we go into the details, I have to give a couple of safety warnings. Here I am playing with mains electricity. In Europe, the voltage is at 230 volts AC. That's a 325 volts peak. But what's more dangerous is actually the current. You can see the cables are quite thick and there are lots of sparks which are just trying to find a way to freedom and you don't want to be on their path. And to avoid this from happening, I'm using a couple of tricks so I protect myself. The first one is a glove. This is a latex glove and the idea is that I have some kind of insulating material between my skin and electricity which is on the cables. Because this is a rubber-like material the insulation is quite high. What you can also see is that I'm keeping my second hand in the pocket. And this is to prevent having two hands in the circuit because what could happen is that the electricity goes into one hand through your body, through your heart and exits the other hand. If I only keep one hand, it would have to go through my hands, then through my body, then out of my feet and then into ground. This is a bit more insulation and the heart is not directly uh, on the path. Also, what you can see is that I'm having long sleeve, and this is again to add insulation. This way, I, when I move around, my bare skin, my arms won't touch any cable which might be open and, and lying around. Hey, I dropped my screwdriver. Let me get it. Um, I'm also using some tools. This non-contact non voltage detector. And it's quite useful because as the name says, it detects voltages without touching any metal piece. And you see here, there, there are no metal parts, it's just plastic. Um, this only works on AC and for this one, it's from 90 to 1000 volt AC. And if I go near any cable which has 90 to 1000 volt AC, you will hear, you will see the light and then you will hear it also beeping. Um, before you use it though, you should test it if it really works. So first press on the button to see, so this has some light, press on the button to check if there's still some battery. The light going on means there's still some battery. And then go on a cable where you are sure that electricity passes through, because if something else is broken, maybe the, the voltage is not detected, but there's actually some voltage here. So let's test it, for example, on this breaker. And this breaker electricity comes near here, then out of here, and if I put it here, you know it beeps. So that's quite useful. And now if I switch the breaker off and I go in again, it doesn't beep anymore. So there's no power anymore. The issue is that it detects anything which is nearby because it's non-contact. And if I go just nearby any other cable, you will hear it beep. So there might be some false alarm saying here there's some voltages on this cable, but actually on this one there's nothing. This is connected here and there's nothing inside it. But this tool is really good to give a first indication and a first warning that there's electricity somewhere. The next tool I have is this electrician screwdriver. Well, that's actually, that's only the name I, I give it to it. Um, this is very useful because it has a flat end. Most of the screws you will have to screw on, on screw when handling electricity are flat, so it's quite convenient. Um, it has also insulation on the 
uh, all around the metal part in the beginning, so the thing which crew. So whenever you hold it, you still have all this insulation until the tip, so nothing can happen. And the last thing it has, which is quite useful, is here on the back. Uh, I'll show you the details afterwards. It has a small bulb, um, light bulb. So whenever you touch it with electricity, you might not see it because it is very, very faint. But on the back here, the, the bulb is actually glowing, meaning that there is electricity, like the voltage detector. If you do it on neutral, nothing is glowing. And this means this only detects phases, not neutrals, because electricity is driven, uh, driven on the phase and somehow goes back to neutral, even if it's not exactly that. Um, the issue with this thing is that um, this bulb only works if you touch it and if electricity passes through. Because if you use a glove, you can see that no bulb is going on. But still, very useful. I also have this one. This is actually a voltmeter and it's like a multimeter but it's only thought for measure voltages and it's specifically designed to work with electricity. It's the Unity UT15C, not too expensive. So you have two probes which are connected using a long cable and yeah, no power on button. It goes automatically on whenever it senses some power uh, and it's quite useful. So if I put it in here, you will see that this LED is on and the thing beeps. Oh, oh, let's hear it. Maybe you can hear it now. It beeps to, to warn you that there's some kind of electricity. So it's a bit better than the screwdriver because this indicates you with a faint light only and it doesn't work with latex gloves. This works also with latex gloves. It, there's, the, there's no issue with that. And then if you want to measure anything, just use the second probe. For example, let's go to neutral. Or any neutral works actually. Up, You will see there's still some noise. And then the small screen here will tell you that there are 230 volts. And mainly the LEDs here will go up to 230 volts. And it still beeps a lot to warn you that there's electricity. And really, its main purpose is measuring electricity. Uh, it has guards here, so you, you don't slip. It has tiny bits, but you can also extend them a bit. But yeah, very, very neat, small thing. Basically, a multimeter just for, for volts. You can also use normal multimeter. So generally for electronics, I use this multimeter, and I quite like it. It's the Unity UT61E. It has 2020. 2000 counts, it has a PC link on the back, and the first thing when you switch it on is volts in DC mode. And yeah, it's cheap, It's I love it for electronic, and I only use this one. I also have another multimeter, it's this one. This is the Fluke 17B, and whenever I want to play with a higher power, I use this one because Fluke is a more well-known brand, actually normally an expensive brand. This multimeter is one of the least expensive ones and still a hundred dollars. And yeah, I trust more this safety than the safety of the cheaper Unity with more functions. And you can see that this is more designed for electricity because the first menu, oops, the first menu is voltage AC and then the second menu is voltage DC. So I mainly use this one when I want to play with um, high current, high electricity, uh, because it's safer, or I think it's safer, than the Unity. But out of that, the really, really most important tool you use, you have and you should use is your brain. Double check everything. Is the breaker switched off? So it's not, is no electricity going through? Um, verify on the cables if there's real no electricity in the cables and keep concentrated on what you're doing. And while I'm not an electrician, um, using all of these tips, I didn't get electrocuted once, so no harm happens. And if you're asking what the hat is for, it's just that if people are coming by and seeing this, they think I'm crazy and they will avoid talking to me. This keeps me this allows me to keep concentrated on what I'm doing. Let's have a closer look at how this electrician screwdriver works.
For that I will just use electricity and here it is not switched on and also the voltage tester will not tell that any voltage is on. If I now switch it on, I just use this cable and strip the parts. And if I go through the leads, you will see that here now there is some active power, the phase going through. Um, because of how European plug works, you can plug it one way or the other way, there is no indication. So this is why while normally blue should be neutral and everything else should be the phase, in this case blue is the phase because you never know which way you plug it in. So in this case blue is the phase. Now if I use the screwdriver, if I touch, just touch the phase, nothing happens and same thing for the neutral and same thing for the earth here. Now on the back there is a metal uh, metal piece. If I touch the metal piece up, let's have everything in the camera. If I touch the metal piece and now I'm touching the face, you see that there is a tiny light going on. And this tiny light tells me that this is the face. If I do it on the neutral, no tiny tiny light goes on. But a light can only go on if electricity passes through. This would mean that actually electricity goes through the phase, through the metal part of the screwdriver, through the, f through the bulb and then out here, because it doesn't work if I don't touch the metal part here. So if it goes out here, it goes through my body. I have electricity going through my body from mains. And this might sound dangerous, but it isn't because of how this works. And we'll see that the current is quite small with the multimeter. Now I've connected the screwdriver to two multimeters. This multimeter will measure the voltage drop across the screwdriver. It is connected to this end, this is the red wire, and then to the other end, so the cap where the metal is, to the other black wire here. This one will measure the current which is going through the, the, the stick. This is connected on one side to the end cap and the other side, this is the other side. And as long as I don't touch it, there will be no current passing through. And there you see also the light is not on. Now, if I touch it, you see that the light on the stick goes on. It's on and off. The light on the stick goes on. And you can see that there's a voltage drop of um, 90 volts across the stick, meaning that the rest, the 140 volts, go through my body. And there is a current of 9 microamps going through. So we have nine microamps going through the body and as I touch it differently because of the internal resistance of my body, or how I'm touching grout and so on, this might vary but it, it's always in the microamp range so you don't feel any tickling, you don't feel anything because it is so low. I see here I'm now and I was at 16 microamps, 20 microamps and this can change. Now normally on the panel meter there is an earth dig detection by measuring the difference between the phase and the neutral. And whenever there is current going through the earth, meaning that there's a leak, generally there's a malfunction, so it will trip this differential breaker, so no, no one would be harmed. In this case it does trip it. This is because it is so low that it doesn't care. If you look at the circuit board, or and at my differential breaker, it only breaks if there is uh, 30 milliamps which go through earth instead of going back through neutral. 30 milliamps doesn't sound a lot, but you still fight it tickling before it breaks and it could be dangerous, but this is more safety measure. And this is how this stick works and it is quite nice to use it all the time, so I like it. Now the other thing is that um, I use latex glove when I play with electricity so for protection. Now if I use the latex glove you see that nothing is going through the thing. So the only small difference here, so there might be one microamp which is going through but else there's, there's no change. That might be more a measurement issue than, than anything else and the stick doesn't light on. So latex glove or nitride glove uh, should protect you against and that's why I will use this for protection. While renovating the apartment, the landlord also decided to renovate the electricity installation. 
Previously, I didn't have this electricity boxes, I just had the panel. So they renewed everything, they put a new box with a new panel and new fuses, but they also decided to take away the electricity meter, which was right here. And now this is empty. So it was the electricity meter in the apartment was quite useful because I would I could see how much energy I was using. Now the electricity meter is in the cellar in a closed room which I didn't have access to. So I decided to create my own electricity meter. And this is the spark counter. And you only see the display here from the spark counter. This is the spark counter, my own custom built electricity meter. Uh, it's made of two parts. The first part is this thing here. This by itself is also is actually an electricity meter. It's the P-Sphere PZEM004. And you provide power. So this is where you provide power. I've added a fuse to protect it because it's a cheap Chinese product. And then here you see there's other wires going through a coil and the coil is around the neutral wire. So this coil will um, will be able to detect all the sparks which are going through the neutral wire and this is counted by here, this electricity meter. And the second part is my own added part, this is the spark counter. This is the second part of the spark counter, the brains of it. So here we have the electricity meter. It allows me to measure how much electricity I'm using, principally to this coil. It also displays at the current time how much electricity I'm using, here the power, and how much I used in total, the energy in kilowatt hours. It also displays the voltage and the current. But this is only at one point of a time. I wanted to be able to see it over time. And this is why I've added this thing here, the brains. So it's principally based on this microcontroller, that's an Atmel Atmega, on an Arduino Nano development board. And what it does is it receives 5 volts from the internal 5 volts from the electricity meter. And there's also this other connection, the cable here, and it's the serial port. This electricity, I chose this electricity meter because it offers a serial port on the side. This is this cable here, and what it allows me to do is that on, with the firmware here, I periodically query all the values which are displayed. This way, the microcontrollers knows the power, the energy, the voltage, and the current at a specific point in time. And then it uses this small module here, that's a Nordic NRF2401. It's a radio module, a transmitter and receiver, so a transceiver and it will send the values which it got. So periodically, the microcontroller will get the values from the electricity meter and send it using this radio module. And on the other side, I have an Arduino with exactly the same radio module, which is just listening for the values and saving it into a database. This way, afterwards, I can see using a graph, um, over time, the energy consumption. So the power, the voltage, the current, and so on. And this is the spark counter. What's wrong with the spark counter is that I did something fundamentally wrong. So here you can see where the energy comes into my apartment, these thick wires here. Then it goes through the distribution panel, which you see here with all the security fuses and, um, and the breakers. Then it is distributed through the thin wires to all the plugs, to the lights, and so on. If you look closely, you see that there are five wires. We have on the back here the green and yellow, this is earth. Then we have blue, this is neutral, where I've put the coil around. And then we have three additional wires. We have gray, black, and brown. And what this means is that actually my household is a three-phase, four-wire system. So three phases, the three which we see here, and four wire because the fourth wire is the neutral. Earth is not counted, it's just here for protection. And on a three phase um, four wire system, you cannot measure the electricity correctly just by measuring how much current is going through the neutral wire. You have to measure on each of the phases. And this is why it's wrong and this, I didn't record the, the right current consumption because I was tapping on neutral why I should tap on the three different on the three phases. How to be sure if you have a one phase or a three phase installation in your apartment? Generally in apartments you have one phase because you don't need 
three phases. Three phases are, is often used for appliances which require quite a lot of power. In my apartment, I have nothing like a huge motor or anything like that which requires three phase. Yet still, I have a three phase installation. And the first clue are, well, these wires here, because I have five wires, so four wires. So we have one neutral, one ground, and then I have three other wires which have a different color than neutral or ground, brown, black, and gray. And because they have, because there are three of them, them it tells me the three phases, and because they have different colors, it tells me that there probably is three different phases. But the best, uh, a better way to really be sure is just using the multimeter in the volt mode or the other multimeter I showed you and test actually the voltages. So for example, here I go to neutral with the black and then I go with the red to one of the phases and you can see it's 230 volts and this is normal in Europe, most of Europe, the installation is always 230 volts. If I go to the next one, I still have 230 volts. The last one, 230 volts. So each phase has 230 volts compared to, to the neutral. Now, if it would be the exact same phase on all three cables, there would be no difference, uh, electrical potential difference between, between two phases. And voltages is just measuring the difference in potential between the electrical the difference in electrical potential. So now, if I put the minus to one of the phases and the plus to the other phase or the other probe, you will see that actually I'm, I'm at 399 volts, 398 volts. So if it would be exactly the same phase, it would be a zero volt because there would be no difference. Here it is at 390, uh, 399 volts. And this tells me that there is a difference in in phases between these two and the same if you test all of them and this 399 or around 400 volts tells me that there is um, kind of a phase shift of 120 degrees and we'll see what this means what better to show what phases are than an oscilloscope the oscilloscope will allow us to show the voltage over time, so we will see the sine wave of the AC. And this, if we show two, two forms, we will see the phase differences, so what phases are and the differences. Now, a word of caution, we will connect the oscilloscope probes to mains electricity here. You have to be aware of that this lead here, the crocodile lead, is called ground, but it is connected to this part of the oscilloscope, so the ring, and this is connected to the earth of the plug, what you see here. And the simple way to show you this is using the multimeter. Here we are in, um, um, in continuity mode, so whenever I short it, you should hear a beep. Now, if I connect one lead to the earth of the plug and then the other lead to here, this ground, you will see that it is directly connected to Earth. Meaning that if you connect this to anywhere on the phases or the neutral mains electricity, you will create some kind of a short to Earth. And this is where the differential breaker, circuit breaker will trigger. This is here to detect if there is a leak there is an earth leak, meaning if there is any kind of power which is going from one of the phases or neutral to the earth plug instead of going to the neutral or the phase. And how it does that is that simply it measures the difference between what goes in and what goes out. This is why everything is connected and also the neutral is connected. And on other breakers, like here it's just a fuse, you see there is no neutral. There is no need because it can measure the current which is passing just using the using one wire. To measure the differential, you need also something to compare against, and this is the neutral which is here. So one way to avoid that there is some earth leak and the current is simply to remove actually the earth link of the oscilloscope. And you can do this by simply putting um, some kind of tape here 
on the plug or cutting the mains on the plug or however you want to do it but just avoid that this connection is connected on the plugs where you will connect it to to these leads to the earth leads this way the ground which is here so the chassis of this oscilloscope will be floating and because it is floating you can tie it to anything you want so if we can now use the crocodile lead and connect it to one of the phases and this floating which was floating before will be towed to one of the phases or to neutral now you have to be aware that all the chassis is connected to this ground lead so uh, anything which you any part of metal which you see here is probably also connected to one of the phases or neutral we will connect it to neutral um, meaning that it is dangerous to touch it in here so still gloves and be cautious about it the second thing I will do is I will use what you see here uh, this is my custom built isolation transformer and only here this is the important part this is the transformer it is heavy because it can carry a lot of current but actually it doesn't transform it doesn't power up or transform the voltages there will be 230 um, volts coming in here and on the other side there will still be 230 volts coming outside but because we go through a transformer it will be completely isolated so meaning that if any circuit here would be connected to one of the phases or the ground anything which I touch with the probe will not be connected to one of the earths or, or the grounds or uh, one of the phases or one of the neutrals because we will because everything will be tied to this floating um, 230 volts which we have here so yeah once we have taken care of these aspects we can connect the oscilloscope to the mains power and see what it looks like so here I've connected some cables to this electricity panel we have on black which is here the neutral then we have phase one which is yellow, phase 2 which is red and phase 3 which is orange again we have phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 but this one I won't use because I already have phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 right here and we will use this to connect to the oscilloscope so here I've connected the ground lead of the oscilloscope to the neutral which is here in black then channel 1 of the oscilloscope on the back here is connected to the yellow wire which is phase one channel two of the oscilloscope is connected to the red wire which is phase two so be aware that now ground is tied up to the neutral wire so meaning this shield here is also connected to the neutral wire and the oscilloscope or the circuit breaker didn't trigger and the oscilloscope didn't blow up because I've separated the ground of the oscilloscope to the earth connection and I'm also using a isolation transformer but that's not a must so now let's I enable channel 1 and here you can see remove the menu here you can see the AC waveform of phase 1 we have 100 volts per division and you can see that the volt max is 324 volts same on the minimum the minimum is 324 320 volt is shown here but still it means that this is 230 volt AC and this is because how uh, AC voltages are, are calculated um, you don't sum up all the values which you have over time because that would be zero volt since you have as many positive values as negative values what you do is you use a uh, volt RMS and RMS stands for root mean square so all the values you have it you square it you add it and you root it and that means the root mean square value and this is 231 volt as you can see here there's also a fast way to calculate it is just take the voltage max which is 320 volts and divide it by the square root of 2 this works with um, sinusoidal wave though not with all other waves so yeah this is phase 1 now if I enable channel 2 for phase 2 you see that uh, again menu off it doesn't overlap channel 1 so phase 2 is different than from phase 1 and it is still 230 volts as you can see on the uh, on the bottom 
and there is a phase difference because it is uh, shifted over time and this is what you see what is also calculated by the oscilloscope the phase difference between 1 and 2 is 120 degrees and if I do the same thing so let me connect it to phase 3 I'm disconnecting phase 2 I'm connecting it to phase 3 I have to enable phase 3 on the circuit breaker here phase 3 now you see it is not uh, shifted up, but it is shifted beforehand, and we have minus 20, 120 degrees. So we have a, a full waveform which is separated in three symmetrical ways. So every time 120 degrees, meaning the sum is 360 degrees, complete circle. Uh, let's go back to phase two. Thank and as we can see, so on the multimeter, we saw that the difference between the two phases when we probe it was 400 volts and we can also see this on the oscilloscope if I enable math A minus B because one is the reference and the other voltage is um, what we want to measure now I have to change the scale scale come on up 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 500, 200. So now we the, the the scale of the math is 200 volts, and we can see it is almost as high. So uh, the volt RMS is 398 volts as calculated here. What's good with this three-phase system when it's symmetrical is that the last phase, or so the difference between two phases, is also symmetrical. Asymmetrical and is also a sinusoid, as as you can see here, and yeah. So whenever you need 400 volts in your appliance, you just have to find um, two phases and take the difference between two phases. Then you have 400 volts. Else, if you just use one phase and neutral, you always have 230 volts. That's how you do it. Um, in my home, I have no plugs with three phases the three phases are split in single phases and uh, each section of my apartment has one single phase yeah, because I have only one single phase load um, talking about loads we'll see what it looks like also in the oscilloscope to measure the current which is going through the phase I will use um, these loads so these are pretty resistive loads on one side we have here a toaster just to warm up toast and then we have uh, a kettle and everything which is heating generally food takes a uh, lot of current in this case when we see on the back tick, 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 here it tells that it uses between um, 710 and 880 watts and and this one it uses we'll be see here actually it's not here it doesn't tell uh, between 2200 and 2400 watts what so this heater just uses really a lot of current and a lot of power but this will be really good because we this because of this high power so they're different we will use we will be able to identify which is on which phase because they're quite different and because they use high power um, we will be able to clearly see the current which is drawn on the phases. Now, if I connect this toaster to the power through the electricity meter, we will see how much it really consumes in power. So it will vary, but it will give us, or it will confirm what they really say. So here it uses 815 watts. And if we go through the function, voltage 230 amps, it uses three and a half amps, around three and a half amps. And now for the kettle, if I switch it on we will see that it uses around 2200 watts that's quite a lot and if we look at the amps we have nine and a half amps so yeah as a and only to heat up water but at least it heats us up quite quickly to measure the current we can either um, go in line so between the load uh, and this with a um, multimeter but here I don't want to modify any of the wirings of the electricity the other way to do it is using coils so this is what you see here there is a coil wrapped around the neutral in this case and whenever there is current going through this cable that will also generate a current in this coil 
and afterwards you just measure the current using the two wires coming out of this coil. Now I don't want to, uh, instead of using this coil, I will use this thing here. So this is the SCT013 and the principle is the same. Up on the complete bottom here you can see there is actually a coil and this is what will pick up the signal. But now you have also this kind of thing so I can open this, this is a split core. Uh, I think this is the ferrite, so this is a split core ferrite, I'm not sure if it's a ferrite. And then we just need to clip it on a wire, so that's a lot easier than putting these things on. And on the end we have this jack, and here it says, up. here it says 30 amp with 1 volt, and actually there's already a resistance here. So how to measure the, the current generally? You just put a resistor across the, the current you want to measure and this way you get a voltage and we can measure the voltage here. So uh, with a 30 amp current we will measure a voltage of 1 volt on this jack and this is what we will do to measure the current. So here I've connected the coils to measure the current to, to the phases. Now to figure out which phase is which phase. Actually, figuring out which phase is the next one is quite easy because uh, it has a phase shift 120 degrees. So you could say that this, if this would be phase one, this would be phase two, and the next one would be phase three. Now to figure out which is actually phase one, you just have to look at the color cables. These are generally coded. So in Europe, um, the phase one, so L1 is brown, Phase 2 is black and phase 3 is grey and this is also where I've put the coil. So the one on the back here is on the brown side, this is phase 1. The one on the front is on the black wire, this is phase 2. And the one which you see here is actually on the neutral wire. And with that we can measure the current which is passing through the different phases. And I've kept here my... Um, the voltages, the, the way to measure voltages are on the different phases and we'll check on the oscilloscope. So here on channel 1 of the oscilloscope I've connected the voltage on phase 1 and then on channel 2 of the oscilloscope I've connected um, the split core, so the, uh, the current measure, the current sensing coil on, on phase 1. Um, on the voltage we can see on the phase 1 and if I now enable the circuit breaker for the toaster which I've connected on phase one, you will see that the um, waveform corresponds. So there's a slight shift, don't know exactly why, but um, the toaster is connected on phase one. You see it's almost exactly matching. It's a purely resistive load. And you can see that voltage peak to peak is around uh, 100 millivolts, meaning that uh, because the coil measures 30 amp for one volt, it means that we have, if we have only 100 millivolts, we had one tenth of that, this is 3 amps. So this way we've measured that the um, toaster currently draws around 3 amps. Now I've connected on channel 2 of the oscilloscope, oh, which is actually falling, I've connected the coil which is measuring what the current passing on phase 2. And on phase 2 I've connected the water kettle, so if we switch on phase 2, you will see the current goes high and we have around 300 millivolt. It even goes over what the scopes can display. We have around 300 millivolt and since 1 volt is 30 amps, 300 millivolt is around 9 uh, amps and this is what the uh, water what kettle uses. Now what you can also see, see is the shift between uh, the voltage on phase 1 and the current on phase 2. And if I now switch the probe from channel 1 of the oscilloscope to phase 2, come on, you will see that it is in sync. Up, now. now you see that it is in sync, so we are, cur we are drawing current from phase 2. So now on channel 1 of the oscilloscope I've connected the current sensing coil of the neutral wire. And on channel 2 of the oscilloscope, I connected back the current sensing coil on phase 1, so where the toaster is. And the water kettle is on phase 2. If, we, if I enable phase 1, so where the toaster is, you see that the current on phase 1 and neutral matches. 
um, the two waveform overlap. And this is because everything which is used on phase one goes through the neutral wire. And this way we can actually measure what, uh, what, is, what current consumption is, at least on phase one. Same almost applies to the second, so the water kettle. Now I am enabling phase two. And on phase two, you first see that there is a shift in the, in the phase because the kettle is using power current on phase two. But also on channel two, there's nothing because on phase one, the toaster it is off. But on the neutral wire, we can still actually measure um, the voltages, the, the current which is used. And again, we had 200 millivolts. That's the nine amps we, we would be using. What's now interesting is if I enable both. You can see that the toaster is on because of the second channel. But what was interesting to see is that the current did not add or the waveform didn't have a disformation. So we didn't add what we were consuming on phase one on top of phase two on the neutral wire. Actually, the current sensing on the neutral wire decreased. And this is the tricky point and actually also the useful point in three phase systems. This is because part of the load actually we are using more power on phase two than on phase one. And this way the power which is used on phase two will actually not go through the neutral wire but because of the phase difference it can also go through the phase one wire and this is why you see a decreasing when I enable phase one of the same amount than almost the same amount than what um, phase one was using. No, not exactly because of a shift difference. So now I switch off both. And this is why you cannot, in a three-phase system, measure how much current you're consuming on the neutral wire. Simply because three-phase systems are thought are quite useful in the way that if you have a balanced load, so the same load on the three phases, you will have nothing going through the neutral wire. Everything will be, uh, the current which is consuming, will be distributed over the three phases because they have a symmetrical fa phase difference. This is one of the important properties of three-phase system. And this is also exactly why um, my spark counter would not be able to measure the current consumption. So what I've measured was not actually the total current consumption, but when everything, when something was unbalanced, so when I, well, something was unbalanced, meaning that not everything goes through the three phases, but something goes back to the neutral, this is what I saw. So all the measurements I have is only the unbalanced values of my current consumption and not the total value of all the currents which are on the three phases. Now, if you want to measure, um, if you want to measure the total consumption, what you have to do is simply measure the current going through all the three phases and not through the neutral wire. The neutral wire just shows you when something is unbalanced. And when it is completely balanced and the same current is used on the three phases, then the neutral wire should be at, at zero and there should be no current passing through. That's also the reason why um, the neutral wire doesn't have to be thicker than the three other wires because they distribute the, the load. So it just has to be as thick as the three other wires. It doesn't have to carry more current. Using the spark meter, I cannot measure the electricity currently on a three-phase system. It works on a single phase where everything goes back to neutral and I can put a coil on neutral, but on a three-phase system where actually the current doesn't only go back to neutral, but can go to the other phases, we have to put, uh, we have to measure the current consumption on each of the three phases and then add it to it. So this one only good for one phase and for a three phase system, I need to do something else. But that's for the future, that's upcoming and until then, enjoy.